<laughs> Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Scala and I do grad school and just live content here on YouTube and I am just really glad that you're here. I went to a video all about my portfolio for grad school. I'm currently a Masters of Architecture 1 student at Harvard's Graduate School of Design and um, <laughs> the portfolio process was very intense and a lot of work and i've gotten a lot of requests in my previous videos to just talk about that and show my portfolio so in a few minutes i will be <laughs> sharing my portfolio with you guys as well or a few seconds i guess um and yeah just a few things i wanted to mention before we get started a big thing about Starting a portfolio was first just knowing the requirements, so knowing how many pages, how many projects, what type of projects, um, how large the file size can be, and what type of color mode, I guess, so like RGB is best for digital, so a lot of my applications um, for grad school going into 2022 or 2021 um, required that the projects all be in RGB rather than CMYK. So things like that are good to know. And again, I have a spreadsheet that has um, just all the requirements for schools, I guess like more so just an organizational <laughs> spreadsheet for the requirements for schools. And I will link that in the description so you can go back and add those important things um, to the spreadsheet so that way you have them down in applying and in creating your portfolio as well. So I think that's all I wanted to mention before we jump in. So let's just get started and look at my portfolio and open up my portfolio. And I should have mentioned this in the beginning, beginning, but this is of course not to brag about the work that I've done or to say that my portfolio was any better than anyone else's. Um, honestly, your entire application comes into play when you're applying to these schools. So this portfolio was one part of it. And of course in architecture, it is really important, especially um, at Harvard, it was very important for whether you got the where you were entered into the AP, um, MARC 1 AP course, which is like a year less than the typical MARC 1. I'm the typical MARC 1, so I already know that my portfolio wasn't perfection, um, but I am very, very proud of the work that I've done over the last four years from 2018 to 2020, from my undergrad um, and a little bit of personal works that I've done too. So I am happy to share this with you all and I hope it just inspires you to work to create and produce your collection of work in a way that really represents who you are. So I think it starts here <laughs> at the cover page and um, I just love this cover page. It was actually from my sophomore year project <clears throat> or sophomore year studio class. It wasn't a project in itself. We were just learning um, what it meant to design in an abstract way. So I just thought this image was beautiful and the shadows were just um, captivated. And I wanted it to be my cover page. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Um, and you might wanna do something similar, something that's inspiring to you or even just brings back a memory of how you hope to design in the future. And this just has, of course, my, my name and everything. I don't know if I'm gonna give many tips. I think I'm just gonna show you my portfolio. And if I think of things along the way, I'll mention them. So then here is my first and second pages. I decided to put a little spiel about who I am and what I want to be as a designer in architecture. You might have to do this for your application. A few schools required it. Um, I think Princeton required a whole page almost of this. Um, and yeah, it also just a beautiful way of introducing yourself to whoever's gonna be reading your portfolio. And then the contents page, <laughs> pretty simple, I just have, um, all of my works in order. Um, and I thought I would just have like a large cover page. You can see here that I even have a little bit of a uh, personal work <laughs> in there, um, which is just fun to include in the end. And here's my first project. This is my second semester junior year project. So it was the COVID year. It was when everything moved online and I'm super proud of this project. One of the things, I hope you can see this, I hope I'm not covering it too much, um, that I really liked about this project was how I kind of want to be creative and still create a model of some sort. So I included my process work on here, what inspired my work, um, and then how I wanted this to be created at the end. So um, these diagrams here on the far right show um, what strategies influenced the building at the end. Um, and I just drew on top of books that I had stacked together, which was kind of the most exciting part <laughs> of that. Um, yeah. Highlighting tones um, here. I don't know why I'm working from right to left, but here I am. Um, 
the one of the most important things of this project was the lone chair. I just saw this as an outcry for, for community within a residential neighborhood that we were um, supposed to build up in Alexandria, Virginia. So that was my clear concept, and I used the color orange again to highlight that. Um, and now to the first page. Um, just creating something that's very clear, I think, was important to me. So I wanted to make sure I always had a cover page with a large image of my project, and then it included the location instruction, instructor and software especially, and of course the year that I had made this project and whether it was part of a studio or not. So that's pretty consistent throughout all of my um, pages. Um, again, more works um, or more images from this project. I always conclude or usually conclude with some of my renderings. This was, a, this was a really fun project. I <laughs> really nice to see that I could have done this even during COVID. And it's you'll you'll realize this as you're going through your own portfolio work. It's awesome what you have done in the last four years, whether it's your best work ever or just something that you end up producing. You produced something. Um, another project. This was um, also my junior year, my first semester. Um, and again, I just went for that clarity of location instructor and software. Software seems to be pretty important in these applications usually, um, but I would of course check with your school and the application um, requirements. Even like this page layout might not have been the best idea for me. I ended up creating, um, so I wanted this to be a two page spread as you see it here. So these are two pages separately, but what I should have just done was print them as one page together if I wanted everyone to continue to see them um, as one continuous page. So I would have gone back or I should have gone back and fixed that as well. Um, this is my third project. This was an analytique project for my junior year as well. And it was uh, <laughs> the stress that comes to mind when I think of this project, just the amount of detail that had to go into um, all of this layering of information it ended up being an entire studio, um, like, I guess, project. So we all, my entire studio of, I don't know how many people, <laughs> and anywhere from 30 to 60 people worked together to collect this information. And then three, um, originally four, three, four students um, ended up doing the graphics. And I was part of the graphics team. And that team, we have forever been bonded from this insanity. <laughs> um, and this is my sophomore year project. This is technically my first full studio, architectural studio. So um, this brings back lots of memories of <laughs> realizing just how crazy architecture can be um, and that it's not gonna stop getting any crazier. Um, and this is a design for a restaurant inspired by a chef. So I had Massimo Butora. I don't think I'm saying his name correctly. I remember mispronouncing it all sophomore year, but this is a really interesting and exciting project. Um, a lot of showing, my process was involved and I really could have included a lot more images. That's something that I know that whether you're applying for an application to a grad school or for a job, showing your process work is always very important. So I tried to prioritize the second page for all process work, but I'm realizing that I have a lot of images that I could have included into this as well. Um, and then my massing study and final model as well, just showing how this translated into the actual building. Just a few more drawings. I can't believe it's a sophomore year. Um, I did end up going back and fixing my renderings for this application. Um, and I was, I got varying views about this, whether you should go back at a project you've done and like fix it up or change it up a little bit. And um, I personally recommend that you do for an application because you want to put your best foot forward. But I also do understand the argument of, no, this is the work that you had done. Um, and this is more supposed to be a reflection of how you progressed as a designer. So I guess it depends on what you're hoping to achieve in your portfolio, whether you want to show that change in the years, which you'll see regardless. Um, but it's a little bit more sneaky, I guess, <laughs> if you've gone back already and changed um, or updated the, the graphics. So um, it really is your personal preference in this case, um, but there are schools that might explicitly say that I haven't really encountered that fully. Um, or if I have, I'm sorry, I did not follow the rules. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Whoops, I'm apologizing. <laughs> apologizing now. Um, yeah, that's an important thing to look through. 
this is my final architectural project that I included in here. Um, of course, now I have a few more I could include and I'll update my resume, but this is all for my portfolio. But this is all from, uh, I guess I started this 2019, summer of 2019, I started this um, portfolio making and I finished, I finished it in December of 2020. So, um, no, 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 I started summer of, gosh, when did I start? Well, <laughs> since I can't remember. I started this, okay, we just finished summer 2021, summer 2020. Summer of 2020, I started these applications. So I started my portfolio making December of 2020, right before, or yes, January 2021, I finished my portfolio. So I had just completed my first semester, my senior year project. So this is that project. <laughs> I was trying to figure out why I had this project in here. Um, and I didn't have my second semester of senior year because of course I submitted the application before that was completed. So this project comes from one of my final years and I thought this was the most exciting project to ever work on ever. It was a net zero carbon and energy um, studio. We used adaptive reuse of an elementary school building in Arlington, Arlington Virginia. Um, and we had a partner, my partner was amazing. <laughs> I could not, have asked for a better year to be online as well because my my professor was also wonderful and um, invited people from all over the place since it was all online anyone could come and we had we got to meet with professionals and understand what it really took to design a net zero carbon energy proposed proposal for a client so it was amazing. Um, a lot of new softwares was added to my repertoire in this semester, um, Sapphira and Tally being some of them. Um, and yeah, we even won a competition or honorable mention <laughs> in a competition for this project and yeah, so many good memories, but there's a lot of information. I also stuck to two pages or I guess two spreads for each project um, because of some of the requirements for schools um, being minimalized. So I didn't want to overdo it. I just wanted a basic portfolio that just had um, enough pages that any school would take. So I didn't go overboard with the pages. And now I'm going back, of course, and adding multiple pages to each of these projects, but for distilling my information um, so I just get to know who I am as a designer, this is what I came up with. And I am very proud of how I organized this. Um, again, you're just seeing more of our my sophomore or my senior year first semester project. Um, and then I got into design and sketching and just the fun that I like to do. So um, yeah, I think it's really lovely to show a bit of your personality in your portfolio for them to see as well. And I got so many, I remember so many people mentioned this fashion design, um, particularly when I was applying to um, when I was applying to program or not programs, when I was applying to internships. So this is a great conversation starter if you have something unique, whether it's photography, whether it's design in terms of art or design in terms of fashion or more sketching, like whatever you can share that's really embodies who you are, I recommend you put it on there. I did submit this to all schools. <laughs> so I didn't hold back on who I was, at least in this regard. Um, I got to share, of course, a little bit of space. This is St. Mary Magdalene. I, I just love this image, St. Francis. And then I love, <laughs> Touching hands is also a big thing for me. So I just wanted to include a bit of who I was as a designer beyond architecture. And then I concluded with a project that I did with my one of the firms that I work with. Um, and it was a white paper on impact design for senior living in the midst of COVID-19. So I thought that was also something interesting to include and show what else I've done. Um, and I also concluded with my resume and you can do so as well, just so they have it regardless of where they're looking um, in your application. And yeah, this is my portfolio. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I wanted to share with you guys. Um, oh, something that I did make sure to do was that I included the strongest projects at the beginning and end. Some ask that you just keep them in chronological order. Um, and most people for, of course, applications to jobs just recommend that you put the strongest in the beginning and at the end. So that's what I did for my projects. Um, I also concluded with more of my creative work, so I didn't sprinkle it in there, but you could have also done that. Um, and then overall, these pages were reviewed by, <laughs> I feel like 20s or 10s, 
tens of people's. <laughs> I don't know. Everyone I knew read this through just to make sure I didn't have any spelling mistakes or just miss the mark on something. It's really nice to share it with your family who aren't as involved in architecture just to see if they can understand what you're doing. Um, this page was run by my family in particular, and I remember my mom being like, this is very clear, I appreciate this. So um, making sure that they can understand it will allow the application, the um, whoever admissions or whoever's reviewing your portfolio, whether it's an employer as well, to um, get the point down as well, because they will flip through this pretty quickly. So if they can see the beauty of just the clarity, um, that will help. Uh, so yes, so that is all I really got for you guys. Okay, well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful for you to just see my portfolio and get an idea of how one can be created. I am, again, like I mentioned, very proud of what I produced <laughs> in my last five years of being and studying architecture. Um, and of course, there's so much room for improvement in any project, in any space, but what I produced for grad school is something that I still look back on and I'm like, wow, I did that. <laughs> like, like, whoa, that was me. <laughs> so I hope that you can do that um, with any projects that you have, whether they're architecture related or art and design in some shape or fashion or form. Um, I hope that you're able to express yourself within your portfolio in a way that's similar even better or more inspiring for you than how I've done it in this video. So again, thank you for watching. Thank you for being here and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye. Did it. <laughs> Less awkward that time.